History shall be televised. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where if it's not hot, we don't talk about it. If it's not sizzling, we don't fret. If it doesn't entertain, we don't dish. I keep saying this. I keep saying we because I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Miss Pokwola. How are you guys doing? Hi. How are you doing today? Well, you look amazing. Thank you. Hey, you too. Oh, yeah, I know. Always. <laughs> thank you very much. Anyways, how are you doing, man? I'm fine. I'm fine. You sure? You I'm sure? I'm fine. I'm okay. tired, but fine. You're yeah. tired? Well, what did you do? It's not cool to ask a lady how was your night, so mm -hmm. would I ask you what did you do? Uh, nothing eventful though, but I don't understand. I just woke up this morning tired. I think I can't wait for Friday. That's just my ah, mind. Were you stuck in that traffic last yesterday? Oh Lord, definitely. That Got traffic was so... Cry, like, <laughs> God help me. It was uh, terrible. Yeah. You didn't experience it. No, I mean, I did see a little mm -hmm. bit, but nothing... nothing um, but uh, thank God I know the back roads, so oh. I know people that got stuck, but I passed the back roads and I got there. Yes. What time? Or at what time? I left, I think I left here about 5 p.m. Oh, yes, okay, okay. okay. I didn't see that traffic. I think I got on like 5.45 or thereabout. And that's bad? Terrible! I get, I get home in like 15, 20 minutes normally. Like, mm, maybe 15, 15, 15, 20, 30 minutes max. Mm. So extra 15 minutes is a lot oh, of time. Wow. Oh my goodness. Not like us that we spent two, three hours me. on the road. Bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't spend that long on the road, so no. I don't know why you... No, I didn't, I didn't see that traffic, and I, I wasn't actually on that road. I went to um, phase one oh, okay. um, right after, because I, ha I don't have the keys to my house. Since I've been back from my project, I cannot enter my house. So where have you been staying? Different people's houses. <laughs> <laughs> so why wouldn't you just... So what are you going to do about your house? I'm trying to... We'll have to break down the door and stuff, so... How long would that take? I don't know. We'll see. It takes one kick. No, no, I don't have that kind of door. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we'll uh, we, we have a very eventful day, you know, yes. really packed. And we have to just, you know, pop, pop, pop and make sure that everything pops right on time, right? right? Now, let's do yeah, it. so let's do the first um, story for the day, which is on a well in a well-detailed interview. Ayodeji Ibrahim Balogun, popularly known as Whiskey, has revealed when he would marry and why he doesn't react to controversies around him. Um, well, to tell a side of the story, they said it's very easy. Only a stupid man will go around trying to prove a point to the world and even at that you'll find that you can't please everyone that you cannot leave off of people's opinions i think once you understand yourself and your true essence nothing will phase you people's opinions won't phase you i'm just more of a private person and i handle situations in that manner when asked what his plans are for valentine whiskey said it's family i'll be with my family valentine is about showing love and not just the family but everyone around so i'll be busy i'll be busy spreading love and positive vibes to the people like always and when he asked about marriage he said you people will have to wait you shall wait <laughs> so yeah so what's your, what's your take on this one i think it's a strong point okay no go on yeah i really love what whiskey said, said in this interview mm. I was like, well, when I read it, I was like, wisdom. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm. He even warned me to his side. Like, I think I'm moving towards Whiskey's more. Like, okay, this guy. Yes. And you know Whiskey's side before? You know I was 100% uh, baby doll. So and you can't be both? You can't be. You yeah. see, you're part of the problem of the, of, of the entertainment world. Don't talk with her because you're also part of that problem. You. No. You always I, buy whiskey. I, 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 mean, whiskey. I prefer whiskey. a whiskey doesn't mean I don't want the David Doe to shine. In fact, no, oh, that's, not all, open. that's all, uh, that's all that, rubbish, that, please. Uh, because you you sat on the table many times uttering God knows. Mm, uttering so rubbish. You just so that you can. Yeah, so that you can paint whiskey nah, doe. Yeah, yeah, I don't compare. Don't you guys right always right do right the right comparison right. when it comes to David Doe. No, 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 no. I'm all you. about don't, good music. Uh, I'm all about good that, vibes. That's so a lie. You that is a lie. Never pick the side. I prefer whiskey music. Is it my fault I don't like noisy music? <laughs> See, I thought you just said now that you <laughs> like you, you have many mouths. Don't, don't, don't get I, me wrong. Mm -hmm. The fact that David O has songs that I like doesn't mean I would like all the songs. I don't even like all of Whiskey's songs. What are you talking about, Ife? And he gives me some noisy vibes sometimes, and he has songs that I come. I love Holy Ground. You've just you've just like jumped on two different uh, bandwagons right now. Did you just say now that you? Don't need to pick both of them that you are a fan of both of them. Yeah, I'm a fan of both and of them. And you just, just said now David that David O's music noise. is noise and that I you don't like all David his songs. I said it has some noisy songs. You, you know, I have a, a, a disorder, right? That when the music is noisy, <laughs> it, big, it affects my big, vision. Big, big, Do you understand? Big, big. So I've been advised by the doctor not uh -huh. to listen to songs that would affect my vision. Okay. Do you understand? So why are you a fan of, a, of somebody that affects your vision? But that's why I'm choosy about the songs I listen to that are from David O. 
Okay. Uh, Are you getting it? So are you a fan of both of them or not? Yes, I'm a fan of both of them. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that note, but what Anyways, but I think it makes a lot of sense though that mm. um, you know, whiskey same family and it's, it seems really grounded with this family thing and i think um yeah. i haven't seen a man that has gone wrong with family you get because family is really very important it's the first unit you ever you know met your whole entire life interacted with and you know mm -hmm. magic happens from family especially when they're supportive and when they're there for you and i like the fact that you know we we'll begin to see beyond the intimate side of Valentine when people ask you, what are you doing for Valentine? Oh, I'm mm -hmm. going to be spending it with my boo. Now, I asked like three friends yesterday mm -hmm. and um, they came to a conclusion right there and then because they said they didn't have a plan. And one of them suggested, um, let's go to a motherless baby's home or an orphanage mm -hmm. or something. And the three of them collectively decided that on that day, they will be going to do you know, yeah. giving out stuff to the less privileged people. And I felt like, whoa, I, I just I just made a change in the yeah. world, you know? Because if I didn't suggest, you know, or ask the question, we probably no, wouldn't come to that conclusion. So I feel like, yo, I'm a change maker, you know, like, damn. Are you also going to be going to the motherless baby's so? home? But I have a shoot on Sunday, so I wouldn't be joining them, but I would add in okay. my, you know, token. I think mm. that's what the day really stands for. It's not just for you and your boo to Fine, it's, it's part of it, but I think the day naturally says spread love in any way you can it may not actually be with your partner it can be with people that they don't that they don't have anything just spread love that, that day. day is really about capitalism in my opinion let's not mean yeah. yeah. valentine's day yeah. something yeah. that's not yeah. it's yeah. not yeah. some yeah. grand yeah. it's not some grand um like a pistol of like love and all of that if you mm. want to make it about that sure go ahead okay. but it's a <laughs> it's a capitalist driven bring out money and spend um, um, your money type of day, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I see that uh, look, what I was going to say about the, about Whiskey's thing about when he said, you know, you must be a stupid person, da 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 da. It's something I'm going to say in regards to what you guys were saying now. I think just because you choose to make a day, just because you decide to um, use your day and, and give it to the homeless or give it to whoever mm -hmm. else you want to mm -hmm. give it to, there's nothing wrong with that. But then just because other people don't do it that way doesn't mean that yours is better. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I want to just bring out, mm -hmm. out of the conversation mm -hmm. is that um, if you want to spend it with, the, with, your, with your significant other, I think it's important to actually bring out the time to, um, what's it called, spread love to the person that you're with. Not, not, it's not that common to see... Um, people who remember every day to love their partners or to love their families and things like that. Some people need a day. Especially yes, day. some people need that time to just say, okay, let, let's 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 um, halt things up. Like, you know, let's remember what life is really about and spread love to other people. And yeah, it, it's not. It's, I don't think it's a good thing. But some people just need that day. reminder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so it, it is nothing wrong if you decide that that's the day you want to use to either like tell your loved one that you know you're important or whatever, whatever. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But um, <laughs> um, if you want to also do something more significant, like you know sp sp spreading it with your uh, your uh, homeless or ho whatever, whatever, that's also mm -hmm. nice. In regards to whiskey, that's the same thing I was gonna say. Like just because you are private, which is good, but I think privacy is smart. It's a smart thing to mm -hmm. actually have, if, if especially if you're in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm do that but just because i want to respond to somebody who's going um about um bashing my image or saying something that's not true and i want to respond to that doesn't make me stupid in my opinion i think that there's just different ways to kill a chicken so wow well, well, well said but you know different strokes for different Absolutely. folks mm -hmm. all right so we had to really go on the shop very but well today is not your regular show we have not one but four personalities from different spheres of entertainment of the entertainment world joining us virtually is Fumbi Ogumbao who was part of history at um, on Tuesday nights last week actually at the Sundance Film Festival award ceremony as the movie she produced Lizard becomes Nigeria's only Sundance 2021 submission and became the first Nigerian production in the festival's history to win the grand jury prize in the short film category Category. The movie was produced by Akion La Davis Jr. The movie tells the story of a nine-year-old girl who gets thrown out of Sunday school for her unusual abilities. The film, which was set in Lagos in the 90s, stars child actor Pamilaria Yodeji and a host of others. And um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and, well, and girls, welcome the producer of Lisa to the tea time table. How you doing? You don't seem Very excited. Well, if I was you. you right now, I would be so, you know, eep and feel like, yo, I, I, I produced that movie, you know. It's me, man. Like, yo, how can you uh, not in that mood? 
So you know the thing, the, the thing with the thing with producing is like there, there's several, there's several. First of all, it's an overwhelming feeling. It's, it's there's so much gratitude that I feel and that the rest of the team feels. And you know, for any film, it takes it takes a it takes a village, it takes a team of people to mm. actually like make it happen. And so even being um, on the producing team as well, like there's. So there was a bunch of us. There was Rachel, there was Lucy, there was um, Nick, there was myself. And I feel like all of us were just so aligned in, in what we wanted to tell and the story that we wanted to tell. And I just feel so... I think I'm one of those people who just retain the excitement inwardly, you mm. know? Like, I just, you know, keep mm. it on the inside. Um, but it, it's a very humbling feeling, it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it, is, it is definitely humbling in that sense. And that's obviously a, a testament to your character as well. A lot of people would be bragging on top of their voices and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's 2021 mm. and we're still getting... Um, you know, notions like, you know, the first ever, like that for me was like, whoa, for, mm -hmm. like we've been making movies, Hollywood, Nollywood has been in history for a long time. So I wanted to ask you, um, why do you think that is? Like, what do you think um, Lizard had that all the other Nigerian movies who have ever tried to like, uh, um, obviously apply for um, Sundance didn't have that you guys had to then obviously break this record that you guys did? You know, um, I'll be honest, I, I, I think that that's a tough question to answer because, you know, I can only speak about Lizard, I can only speak about what we did and what I feel like um, resonated with the audience and resonated with the grand jury at Sundance. And I think, one, there was a level of authenticity, so the story was very relatable. Mm. And then I also think that... Um, uh, in terms of like the casting, like Familiar Ayodeji is a phenomenal, phenomenal actress. Like I, I you know, you know when they say like you wish that like you know she's just she was just so excellent. We drove her. She had such great work ethic. We drove her sometimes to to you know do things over and over again, and she would just perform like I, you know. So I feel like really um, with this story. Amelia was the star. Like she, she helped to like just grab, like elevate Lizard to what it is right now because her performance, her skill set, um, and then she has such a beautiful mom as well. As well, like you know, her mom is amazing, um, and they're just she's really dedicated to the craft. And I think honestly, if I could say one thing that I think we did right, I think it was showcasing her really, and I'm very thankful that. We were able to get her at that time, and she was available for the shoot. You know, um, so yeah, like I think that's 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 about the, the main thing because I I feel like with Nollywood, I think everyone is really um, we're really just like still at the stage where we are, you know, we just got to keep moving forward and keep putting our best foot forward, you know, just as an industry and as a collective. Um, and I think we've seen that. I think we've seen a significant improvement in the quality of films and things like that, you know. Um, and I'm very, very thankful as well that, you know, with Lizard, like I said earlier, like it takes a village to really make a film. Um, and we were able to get people who are just so fantastic and excellent in what they do. So from the production assistants to the first AD, to the gaffer, to the cinematographer, and so to the editor, and to all the people that were aligned, you know. Nice. Um, and I think that really helped to bring Akionla's vision to life. So, yeah. Okay, so according to research, um, I found out that you were asked to co-produce the movie by Wally. So what would you tell me that really attracted you, that made you want to be a part of this um, film? What attracted me? To the yeah, project? like what captivated you? What hooked you to me? Like, that made you want to be a part of this project? Um, so when I first got the script, you know, I said to people that like I was in a bit of like a funk with production. I was tired. I was like, oh, it's the same cycle over and over again. And so I read the script and it was the first three pages of the script for me. First three pages, I was like, okay, I want to do this. <laughs> and I think that's how you kind of know a good story. You know, um, something in you, tug, something on the pages rather tugs at your heart. Yeah. 
and you just ultimately want to be a part of it. And that's what it was for me. I read the first three pages. It was like about 25 pages there about. I read the first three pages and I was like, yes, I definitely want to do this. Um, and it was just, I guess, the brilliance of Aki and Wale and, and just how they put um, what was a real life experience, how they, how they captured that and put that on the pages of a, of, 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 of a script. And everybody resonated with it. And I, I also think that, you know, um, it really couldn't have come at a better time for us because um, it happened just right before Corona hit. Mm. So we were in such luck, you know. Um, and so I think that timing wise, everything, it was, there was just such alignment on the project really. Right. Um, yeah. All right. So you had a front row seat in the production of this movie, you know, so you must have seen a lot of things that even if I watch this movie, 10 times over i probably won't wouldn't get it so what would you say is the most important lesson for you as you know someone who had a front row suit that the most important message of lizard that was being passed across there you know something that every time you got back home you could resonate you could think back and be like whoa this movie is so deep this message is so powerful what message would you say stands out for you um so I think that there's a myriad of messages. I, I, I think that for me, what really stands out, um, I remember when I first watched, when I watched the first cut, I cried. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. I was bawling, you know. Um, and I think, again, because Aki and Wale wrote it based on their life experiences, what happened to Samilary in the film, um, or Juwon, as her character is called, happened to them. And I think it was just that the authenticity of being a little girl and having a curious mind. And I think in this type of, in our environment, and most like, most, most generally anyway, in this type of um, uh, cultural, religious setup, that's something that you don't often see, you know. So she was curious and she was following this lizard around and, you know, got to discover a lot of things about the church and all of that in the process, um, while also going through what was a very traumatic experience. Um, and I think that for me, like, I, I really just resonated with Juwan, um, because I'm a curious mind myself. So I, 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 I'm a trained lawyer, but then left the illegal profession, like a proper, like, nine to five and decided to, you know, pursue what was my what was my passion and what had picked my interest, which was production, which was something that a lot of people were not doing. Um, and, you know, for a long time, I think there's a certain type of courage and, and um, endearment that it takes to stand out and just be a little bit different. And I, that's what I really could identify with in Juan um, in the story. So I feel like for me, what, what I took away from Lizard you know, as a, one of the producers and also as like an audience, you know, watching the film was just how, um, how brave it, how brave we all are really. And how a lot of times, um, you know, we have, I want to say we have like a sixth sense. We have an ability to perceive and to, and, and to understand things um, beyond our finer, you know, logic, if that makes any sense. Mm, right. And, a lot of times, if you follow that, it will lead you to your ultimate path, you know. So, yeah, that's what I took away from it. All right. Thank you very much. We really have to let you thank go. You but really much. quickly, what's the plan for Lizard in Nigeria? You know, Sundance is international. What are we doing in the home front? Really um, quickly. So, at the moment, the plan is... <laughs> so, at the moment, the plan is still... We still, we still have a number of festivals. Um, it's still going to do a festival circuit. And I think maybe towards... With the end of the year, we'll start to like look at, um, you know, what we what we can do to like bring it here so that people can watch it. Um, again, it's a short film, so it will most likely sit on like a digital platform or some of some sort. So um, yeah, so I think yes, we've definitely talked about that. We haven't summed up any plans yet because we still have to do like a a number of other festivals. But um, yes, we've definitely talked um, about bringing it down here. And, getting everybody to see it. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Fumbi, and thank you for sipping tea with thank us on Tea you. Time.
Alrighty, so thank um, you, thank you so much for having me. A pleasure, ma'am. A pleasure. All right, so tea time continues right after this break, but with a special performance, you don't want to miss this. <laughs> 